What they're going to do in the end is they're going to ration your care. They want to take your money out of your hands, give it to the government. They want to give it to large insurance corporations who own the government officials that they get elected. They want those large insurance corporations to take your money and never pay out a benefit. They want the government to take your money and never pay for your health care. So some politician somewhere can pat themselves on the back and say, I got you covered, America. You've got health care for all. Congratulations. Well, you're not going to be enjoying that supposed coverage when you're looking for a doctor. Because when the government says that they won't cover a cancer treatment because it costs too much, they won't cover a hip replacement because you're too old, they won't let your doctor try to nurse you out of a coma because we just don't think you can make it and why don't you just face the fact that you don't deserve to live. When those things happen, you will be paying the price and yet again your politicians will be patting themselves on the back and saying, you are covered. Well, I want you to look at what coverage means for Medicaid patients. Medicaid patients can't find a specialist like a brain surgeon like I am, or an orthopedic surgeon, or a cardiologist, because Medicaid pays what the government will pay. They pay less than half the cost of providing the care. So these poor folks who need help, we have poor folks who need help, they don't have coverage. They have an unkept promise from a politician. So where do they go? They cram your emergency rooms looking for care that they should get in their doctor's office. Yeah. When they call their doctor's office and they say, I have Medicaid, doc, good, good news, the government's covered me. The doc says, I'm sorry, I have a staff to pay. I cannot afford to take you in my office. Go to the emergency room. That doesn't help patients. And we should remember the unkept promise of Medicare. Uh, we all heard about Bernie Madoff recently. We heard about that man? We heard about his wonderful Ponzi scheme where you give him the money and he said, trust me, I'll make you lots of money and when you retire, you're going to get your money back? Well, government built the biggest Ponzi scheme in the history of the world yeah. called Social Security and Medicare. Yeah. And now the chickens are coming home to roost. And now that it's time to pay up, now that the time the baby boomers are saying, please deliver my care, can you open the magic lockbox that Al Gore talked about and pay for my care? We're sorry. We spent it already. We spent it on a bridge to nowhere. We spent it on union benefits. We gave it away as corporate welfare. We gave it away as social welfare. We really weren't serious. You didn't think we were serious when we said we'd hold your money for you and give it back to you when you needed health care. Did you really believe us? Well, Americans aren't that dumb, Congress. Americans aren't that dumb, Mr. President. We want our money back. There are 42 million Americans on this government Ponzi scheme called Medicare. And now our government has a brilliant idea. Let's create a new government health insurance plan called the Public Option, and we'll add a hundred million people to that, so the taxpayers now have to cover 142 million people. What happens then? Well, what happens then is the unkept promise only gets harder to keep, and they start rationing your care. They start setting up health boards. In the populist bill that passed in, when was it, February? It seemed like 10 years ago now. They created the Federal Coordinating Council on Comparative Effectiveness Research the first of dozens of health care boards about to ration your care, made up of 15 senior level federal bureaucrats with not a single doctor on the panel. They're going to decide what care each one of you can get. And the model they're following is the socialized medicine system in Britain. That socialized medical system has uh, created something called NICE. Sounds awfully nice, doesn't it? The government's here to be nice to you. The National Institute on Clinical Excellence. Well, comparative effectiveness is not so nice because here's what NICE does in Britain and what they're going to do to you right here. They say, your life is only worth $45,000 as a quality-adjusted life year. 
if the care you need costs more than $45,000, we won't pay for it. We're sorry. We didn't really mean to keep that promise when we took your money away from you when you were 30 and held it in interest until you were 65. We're going to ration that care away. And they do things like, say, breast cancer drugs, they cost more than $45,000. You don't get the breast cancer drug in Britain. There's a reason why breast cancer survival in Britain is about 65% and why it's 85% in America because we take care of our patients, we don't ration care. Let me have my time now. So that's why the first point on this, when you're out there working, is no public options. We cannot have a government run plan. I want you to say it with me, no public option. Thank you very much. Now what's the next bromide they're going to throw your way? The next great saving grace of government that's going to ride to the rescue and solve all the problems that they caused? Well, they're going to mandate that you buy the most expensive health insurance policy that the corporate welfare crowd can concoct and force you to buy it. And if you don't buy it, you're going to pay a tax. Is that fair? No! Is it right? that over the last 40 years, the third party payers and insurance corporations and governments have taken all your money away and they're not paying out your benefits and they make tons of profits while poor patients have to fight on the phone to get an insurance benefit paid. Is that right? No. Well, that's exactly what's coming to America. And if you have friends who like uh, uh, to believe in Mr. Obama and his crowd, you should tell them. Your man in the White House, your friends in Congress are going to mandate that you buy greedy insurance corporations' products, regardless of whether you like it or not. And you know why you should tell them that? Because they hate the insurance companies. And they have every reason to do so. Now, we need insurance, don't get me wrong, but not the kind of insurance that's invented in Washington and forced onto you through a tax. No insurance mandate. Say it with me. No insurance mandate. No mandate. Peaceful resolution with our freedom of speech, our freedom to petition the government, our freedom to march, then we don't need those Second Amendment rights for revolution. All right. Well, what's the next step they created? These are their solutions, remember? The solutions to all the problems they created when they made that unkept promise of Medicare. Their next solution is to create a huge bureaucracy. And they're going to force your doctors to buy an expensive computer system and take each and every one of your medical data and feed it to some government bureaucrat sitting in a cubicle and they can do the checklist. Well, doctor, you didn't ration care properly on this paradigm. You didn't ration care properly here. You gave antibiotics when we told you not to. You spent more than $20,000 when we told you to spend $15,000. That is the data they're going to feed, and they're going to force your doctor to do what they're told. And I tell you what, Washington, when it comes to my patients, I'm not going to let you tell me how to practice medicine. They're going to tell me what I'm going to give them. And I'm not going to take their data, and I'm not going to send it to you and some insurance company bureaucrat so you can ration their care. So I'm saying no right here, right now. I'm not buying the computers. I don't care if you give me a stimulus check. And then they're going to march and they're going to say, oh my goodness, look at all these terrible problems that there are. There are 46 million Americans who are uninsured. Well, let me tell you something about some of their propaganda. Well, those 46 million so-called Americans, 9.7 million are not even American citizens. <laughs> who are we insuring? Who's paying the taxes? Who's getting the benefit? Why are we doing this? Americans should get the benefit. Americans should pay the taxes and get the benefit if they're paying it. Then they find that 8 million are already eligible for the government programs that they can't deliver and yet they're not getting signed up. These people, those are the people we need to help. 8 million Americans, those are the ones we need to help. And you know how we can help them? We can help them better than any government program ever devised. It comes from charity, from each one of you and I. We had a system of charity hospitals that got destroyed when Medicare got built. We need to bring back charity into America. To you when you're a Medicare patient. They say, congratulations, you've given us your money, every paycheck, we've taken out money, we've taken out your payroll taxes, we've put it in Al Gore's mythical lockbox and we've stolen from it, we've written IOUs, 
And you know 